a very good evening uh, to all uh, the brothers in Christ. Uh, so till now, we studied about the uh, subject about the uh, church. Uh, what is the meaning of the church? Uh, who is the true church? Uh, so last week, uh, we studied about the type and anti-type. Uh, we saw the example of uh, SAO. We saw the example of the uh, bride and the bridegroom, the queen and the king. We also saw the example of the ten virgins. Uh, five of them were uh, wise and five of them were foolish. And at last, we saw the example of Gideon, where uh, only 300 were selected to go to uh, do the warfare uh, against the Midianites, uh, who were more than 1 lakh 20,000 people. So, uh, today, we are going to read uh, a thing which is specially mentioned in the book of uh, Genesis. Let us read Genesis 2.10. Anil Badar, can you read? And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and the from hence it was parted and become into four heads. Hey, here it says a river came out of a garden of Eden. And once it came out of garden of Eden, it was parted into four parts. And... You see, the four uh, rivers went into the four directions. Okay. Now, where did the first river go? And what is the name of the first river? Genesis, second chapter, verses 11 and 12. Brother. Sunita Ashta, can you read? The name of the first is Pison, that is it which compasseth the whole land of Havila, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. There is Bidelium and the on Onyx Stone. Okay, thank you. So the name of the first river is called as the Pishon. And uh, where did it go? If you see, it says it went to the land of Avila, and in the land of Avila, there was gold, it seems. And that gold was good gold. Okay. Now, what about the second river? Genesis 2.13. Uh, Joel Buddha, can you read? And the name of the second river is Kihon, the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. See, the second uh, river name is called as Gihon and it uh, went to the land of Ethiopia. Okay. Now what about the third river? The third river is given in verse 14. Uh, Munna sister, can you read verse 14? And the name of third river is Hidikel, that is, is it which goes toward the east of Assyria and the fourth river is Euphrates. Very good, sir. Thank you. So, here it says the third river is Hidikel, which goes towards the east of Assyria. And the fourth river, it says, uh, it is uh, called as Euphrates River. So, these are the four rivers that are mentioned uh, that uh, it came out of Garden of Eden. And uh, the four rivers uh, went into different directions. Uh, Pishon, Gihon, you see, uh, and uh, Hidikel and uh, uh, Euphrates. So, what is the meaning of this? Uh, you see, uh, four rivers that came out of Eden. Okay. So, why this uh, information is given in the Bible? So small, minute information about a river came out of um, Eden. You see, it parted into four parts. You see, and it went into different, different places. And uh, in those places, some particular item was there. And uh, the names are given. Why? Why this information is given? So what lesson do we have from this one? You see, in the Bible, what is the meaning of river? See, for the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. If you have any doubts or any questions from the Bible, we need to take and search the answers only from the Bible. So first of all, how do we decode this one? Is that we decode by searching each and every meaning of the word from the Bible. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of uh, 
you see water in the bible you see the lot of meanings of water in the bible and one of the meaning of water in the bible is that it represents people let us read revelation 17:15 uh revelation 17:15 uh Romy sister can you read revelation 17:15 uh Romy sister you there amar brother yes we are here just a second okay And to say unto me, the waters which thou sweat, sweat were the horse. What is the word here? Four. Yeah. Four. It is they called as four. The peoples and mul multitudes and the nations and and tongues. Very good, sir. Thank you. So it says the water with those sourced, uh, where the whole city are the people, the multitude and the nations and tongues, sir. So in the Bible, the water always represents the people. So here it says a river came out of Eden and parted into four ways, means what? In the Garden of Eden, it was only one man, Adam, was created, was created in the likeness and image of God. But through him, the entire generation, entire mankind was formed. And when he came out of Eden, what happened? Uh, you see, he began to multiply. That's what we see in the Bible. You see, that uh, when God, when God uh, uh, told him not to eat the fruit, when uh, Adam violated uh, that command and ate the forbidden fruit, what happened? Uh, God said to him in Genesis 3.17, saying, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Uh, you see, he shall bring uh, thorns and thistles uh, and uh, in sorrow, those shall eat thy bread in all the days of thy life. You see, he was cast out of uh, Garden of Eden. And from thence, uh, the entire mankind was populated through this first pair of human beings. Therefore, all the people in this world are uh, of one source. We are of the one source. You see, as that uh, four rivers were, was of one source. Similarly, the whole world, the entire mankind is of one source. Read Acts 17.26. Acts 17.26. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Acts 17.26? You are there brother, Amar brother? You can read from the screen also. Okay. Uh, Gopal Brother, can you read? And had made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on and on all the face of the earth and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. See? And had made of one blood all the nations of men. So we are all of one blood, one source. Therefore, the whole world was populated through this first pair, Adam and Eve. So, what happened? From this one are, came the four, you see? Huh? A river. So, what is this one? This represents the four salvations which uh, God is uh, selecting or the four group of people which God is selecting among this mankind. So, entire plan of God is represented in this river out of Eden. So we all know God's plan and God has uh, made a beautiful plan to save everybody, you see. And uh, in this, uh, there is a heavenly salvation, the earthly salvation. This is what God promised to Abraham. In thy seed, I shall bless uh, all the nations of this world. I shall make them as uh, stars of the sky and the sand of the seashore. So that represents uh, the two salvations, heavenly salvation and the earthly salvation. So therefore, in the Bible, you see, uh, Jesus uh, is called as the world savior. Okay. So, 
uh, Jesus is not only the savior of uh, Christians, but of the entire world. That's what 1 Timothy 4.10 says. Uh, 1 Timothy 4.10. Uh, Munna sister, can you read 1 Timothy 4.10? For therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Okay, we are the savior. Jesus is the savior of all men, all men, especially of those that believe. So, especially for the believers, Jesus is right, but he is right for everybody also. So, God has a wonderful plan for the whole world. Therefore, in First John two two, he says, Jesus is a propitiation of the sins of uh, the whole world, not only of Christians. Uh. Okay. So therefore, we see there are two salvations. Isn't it? Now you tell me, uh, among the heavenly salvation, which are the two parts? You see, we have, there are two parts, heavenly and earthly salvation. In each and every salvation, there are two, two parts. Like for example, heavenly salvation has got two groups. Earthly salvation has got two groups. Now tell me, who is going to tell me which are the two groups in the heavenly salvation? Hmm? Well, like 44,000 and okay. great multitude. Very good, sir. Very good. So what about the earthly salvation? Anil, brother? Anil, brother, Sunita, sir, tell me. What about the earthly salvation? Who will come for the earthly salvation? Whole world and earth, hmm. ancient. Very good, sir. The whole world and the ancient world is very good. So these are the people who are going to come for the earthly salvation. There are so the four parts are there: two salvations and two two parts are in each of these salvation total making four. So these four rivers that came out of Eden represents actually these four. You see salvations. So we are going to see how. See first of all. The name of the first river is called as Pishon. And uh, you see, it went to land of Avila. And there was gold, it seems. Uh. So how do we decode it? Uh? See, I told you earlier, uh, for the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. Gold, gold, gold is the clue. Now tell me, what is the meaning of gold in the Bible? Who can tell me? What is the meaning of gold in the Bible? What does gold represent in the Bible? See, in the tabernacle, uh, we haven't studied this one. We'll study in the future class. See, in the tabernacle, the things in the court uh, and the things in the holy and the most holy were made of two different metals. The things in the court were made of brass, while the things in the holy and the most holy were made of pure gold. So what does this represent? Sir? This represents, uh, you see, the two types of salvation, the heavenly salvation and the earthly salvation. You see? See, gold always uh, in the Bible represents divine nature. The nature of his God himself is having. So you see, there is no other precious metal than gold. You see, the very costly metal is gold. The very purest metal is gold. You see, but copper is like gold, but it is not gold. It is much similar to gold. You see, we can say that uh, copper uh, itself uh, is a duplicate gold. But not, uh, you see, original. Like, for example, we buy uh, gold-coated items, no? Like wristwatch or jewels, uh, you see? Fake gold, not real gold. Duplicate gold. Huh? Uh, like uh, earrings or uh, necklace or chain. You see, those are all not real gold, but those are all gold-coated. These are made of brass. And it is coated with gold, gold covering. You see, so similarly... In the Bible, brass and copper always signifies human nature. The man who was created in the image and likeness of God as copper is just similar or in the image of gold. Similarly, man was created in the image of God. You see? And gold is the highest of all the metals. Similarly, God himself is God, the highest of all the nature, that is the divine nature. So gold in the Bible always represents the divine nature, while copper represents the human nature. So this river goes to Havila, where there is gold means what? This is the top post, you see, class 
the first class who are going to go to divine nature. You see, this is the first and the last class who go to divine nature. Now tell me, who are the people who, who will get the divine nature? Who will get the divine nature? Who will be rewarded the divine nature? What is that group called as? What is their number? Who will tell? 1,44,000. Very good. 1,44,000. You see, these are the faithful Christians who will go to the divine nature. So, hence, here this gold represents the lakh and 44,000. You see, so, uh, this is the first, uh, you see, part uh, of the heavenly salvation, the lakh and 44,000. So, since uh, 2,000 years, uh, you see, God is uh, selecting uh, this uh, class of people for the heavenly salvation. You see, let us read a few verses about the heavenly salvation. Hebrews 2, 3 and Hebrews 3, 1. Hebrews 2, 3 and Hebrews 3, 1. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto by unto us by them that heard him. Wherefore, holy brethren, partaker of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest our profession, Christ Jesus. Very good. See, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? You see, heavenly salvation is called so great a salvation. Hebrews 3 1, particles of heavenly calling. You see, this was opened only after the coming of Jesus Christ at the first advent. Not before that one. See, nobody was promised uh, to take to heaven. Therefore, uh, what about the people who died before Jesus? Uh, did they all go to heaven? No. Jesus clearly says in John 3.13 that no man has ascended to heaven. Isn't it? Huh? Let us read John 3.13. Uh, Amar brother, can you read John 3.13 brother? Amar brother, can you read? We can read from the screen. Is it possible for you to read? Okay. Uh, Sunita Ashtar, can you read? John 3.13. Okay. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he, ha he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. See? Even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So no man has ascended to heaven. You see, only Jesus. And Jesus is the one who returned from heaven. And uh, nobody has ascended to heaven. So, the heavenly salvation is only for the church. What about the people who lived uh, before Jesus? Did they all go to heaven? No. Acts of the Apostles, David clearly, uh, Apostle Peter clearly says that uh, David never ascended to heaven. His uh, sepulchre is still with us. So, only the faithful ones are promised a heavenly salvation. So, what about the dead? Where are they? You already studied in the subject of soul. That uh, Jesus clearly says in John 5.28 that all are in the graves. All are in the graves. Isaiah 57.2 it says uh, everybody are uh, resting in their peace. Uh, they enter the peace. Okay. Now what is the qualification to be partakers of the divine nature? If you want to be of one like 44,000, what is the qualification? Who can tell me? Who will tell? What is the qualification to be of the like and 44,000? Anil Badar, Joel Badar, what's your qualification? You, you, you don't know the qualification. Huh? Joel Badar, guess, sir. Anil Badar, guess. Uh, Nepali, my bon. <laughs> huh. I, I exactly forgot in English, but it was like. Uh, in Kargarne, Afle Afle in Kargarne, Cruz Bokne, and Eshola Pachone. Ah, very good. Okay, good, brother. Good. So, carry the cross, deny yourself, carry the cross, and follow Jesus. Good. Okay. Let us read on verse John 8 29. So, don't forget this verse at any time. Always keep this point 
in your mind. Read John, Romans 8.29. Uh, Munna sister, can you read Romans 8.29? For whom he did for none, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Very good, sister. Your sister, confirmed to what, sister? The image of? Son. Ah, confirmed to the image of his son, sister. So, so what is your qualification? If you want to win the crown, if you want to be of the divine nature, we should be like whom? Christ. Very good. So, we should be like Jesus Christ, not in our see, outward appearance, but in our character. So, whoever has the character likeness very close to Jesus, you see, they will be given the divine nature. So, they will be given the opportunity to be particular of the divine nature. So, if you want to win the crown, then we should touch the finishing line. That finishing line is the image of Christ. Now imagine, is it so easy and uh, God, God can give uh, the divine nature to anybody? No. To achieve this divine nature, God will push, put us into various tests, severe tests. What type of tests? It will be like purifying of gold. Let us read 1 Peter 1.7. 1 Peter 1.7. Uh, Roman sister, uh, are you there? Can you read? Yes, I'm here. Hmm. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that hmm. precious, though it uh, be tried with fire, might be found unto a praise and honor and glory hmm. at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Mm, unto the appearing of Jesus Christ. See, your trial of your faith is much more precious than of gold. You see that perishata. So, we will be tried in a severe way. You see. So, we should be more precious than gold. Is there anything precious than gold today? No. So, but God says the church are more precious than gold. So, this is the first river this signifies the little flock or going to the divine nature. Now, what is the name of the second river? What is the name of the second river? Nobody wants to reply. Yeah. Gihon. Gihon. Very good, Buddha. Now, which land did you go, Buddha? It went to which place? Anil, Buddha. Muna sister, Romi sister, which place did it go? Ethiopia. 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 Very good. Okay. Ethiopia. Now, what is the meaning of the Ethiopia? Where is Ethiopia? Ethiopia is in the land of Kush. Or today you can call it as modern day Africa. Now, what is the meaning of Africa in the Bible? Ethiopia. What is the meaning of uh, Ethiopia in the Bible? We have studied about the three world class. Do you remember? Uh, Noah had three sons. What were the sons of three? Noah. Noah had three sons, no? What is the name of the three sons? Who can tell? Sunita, tell me. What is the name of the three sons of Noah? Him. Hmm. Him, yep. Sam, Yepit. Very good. Sir. So, Ham, Shem and Japheth. Very good. So there we have seen that Shem represents the Asians, Japheth represents the Europeans, and Ham or the Canaan represents the Africans, the cursed people. Isn't it? See Genesis 9.25. Read Genesis 9.25. Suhitashtra, please read. Genesis 9.25. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants, shall we shall he be unto his brethren? Hmm. You see, cursed be Canaan. He should be servant of servants. So this represents the servant class of people. Now you tell me, huh, among these four salvations, who is the who will be going to uh, be of the servant class? Who is going to serve like a servant? Is it the world, or is it the ancient worthy? 
or is it like and 44,000? You tell me, among these four uh, parts, who is going to be and work like a servant? Who can we tell? World. World. World is going to be sir, like servant. Huh? Think. Last time we studied a people who is going to be servant having uh, something in their hand, putting a white robe. What were they doing? Great multitude. Very good. Sir. Great multitude. Very good. Brother. Great multitude standing before the throne. So these are the servant class. See, lack and 40% of the king. But great multitude are the servant class. So this is the second group that goes to the heavenly salvation. The lost kingship. Why? Because they did not serve the Lord. Now, we have studied in no, Revelation 7 chapter. Behold a great multitude which no man can number. You see? Having white robes, having palms in their hands. Uh, you see? And last time also we saw, you see? The virgin and her companions. You see? The queen is the one who is going to get married to the king. But what about the concubines, uh, the companions? Uh, these are accompanying the queen. Uh, but these are uh, not going to be of the queen class. Uh, so this represents a great multitude uh, who are going to join, uh, you see, the queen behind her. Uh, so what does the Bible say? These are going to suffer in the great tribulation. They're going to wash their robes. Why? Because the robe which Christ has given them, it is defiled with uh, character with unlike Christness. You see, we should be in the likeness of Christ. So one person who spoils their character, you see, with uh, you see, uh, what do you say, a bad behavior or bad character or bad words or bad thoughts, or bad actions, everything, this will have a spot on our robe, which has to be cleansed immediately. You see, but if it's not cleansed immediately, what will happen? God will put them into trouble. You see, a lot of troubles will come there in the life. It might be in the beginning of the life. It might be in the end of the life. You see, it might be uh, to correct them, to pick them up. But even after a lot of corrections, if they don't, uh, you see, pick uh, pick up a character, uh, this chastisement will be in waste. So God will permit a severe blow at the end of their life. Uh, at the end, uh, you see, the great time of trouble in their life. So they may repent and turn to the Lord and come back to the Lord. But it will be very late. They will lose the crown. So this represents the great point. These are like Lot. You see, Lot's wife. We all know, no? Oh, where did uh, Lot and Lot's wife stay? Where were they staying? Anybody knows the story of Lot and wife? Tell me. Lot. Nobody knows the story of Lota. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then you should all start reading the Bible. Huh? Now tell Romy, sir. I just forgot the name, but I do remember. Um... Huh? Tell the incident. I'll tell the story. I'll tell the name. Uh, God was going to uh, destroy the place, so they have to escape from the land. Very good. Then what happened? And uh, God said not to uh, look back. Very good. And uh, his wife just turned back and she became the salt. Very good. Sir. So that uh, place was Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. See? Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire. God pulled them out. God told, never look back at any cost. But she turned back in sympathy. Yo, that is the difference between the great point and the little flock. The little flock, they come out. You see, they run for the life. You see, for the heavenly salvation on the mountains. But the great multitude, they still have sympathy. Even though God has pulled them from the world, they still want to go back to the world. Oh, Lord, Lord, please give me permission. Little bit, I'll go taste it and come back. What did God say? Remember Lord's wife. Jesus said, no. Luke 17, 32. She simply turned, immediately became a pillar of salt. So these are the great multitude who will lose ultimately everything, especially the reward.
Okay, now good. This is the second uh, river. What is the name of the third river? What is the name of the third river? Uh, Anil Buddha, tell me, what is the name of the third river? Yeah. Hit the kill. Hit the Very kill. Good. Very good. Which land did you go? East of Assyria. Very good, brother. So third one went to Assyria, Hidikal. Yes. Now what is the meaning of Assyria? See, Hidikal, uh, Assyria. Uh, uh, it's all in uh, the Bible. See, if you see the world map, <clears throat> Assyria represents, uh, you see, uh, the place where actually Abraham lived. That is the ancient Babylon. It was also called by name Ur. You see? Huh? And uh, the Bible says that uh, he was from Mesopotamia. You see? Uh, read uh, Acts 7 chapter, brother. Verse 2. Acts 7, 2. Jor, brother, can you read Acts 7, 2? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, how come the God of glory appear unto our father Abram when he was in Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia before the dwell in Charon? See, before he came to land of uh, Canaan, where did he dwell? He dwelt in land of Mesopotamia. So, what do we learn from Mesopotamia? In school, they would have given us no teachings. The first uh, civilization started where? In Mesopotamia. You see? Uh, Mahinjadaro. You see? He started the Mesopotamia. The civilization. You see? What is the meaning of Mesopotamia? Means Mesopotamia. Uh, Potamia. Potamia means what? Water. Hippopotamus. Potom. Potomia. You see? Water. Mesopotamia means... Uh, uh, the land between two uh, waters, the land between two rivers. So, which are the two rivers? If you see, you see Euphrates and Tigris uh, River. This is the land which was dwelling between these two rivers. Uh, and this uh, Tigris River, originally it was called as Edikel. Now only the name is changed. Uh, okay. So, this represents the Mesopotamia or the Babylon. Now, who came from the Mesopotamia, if you see, Abraham, to whom God has promised uh, eh, that uh, in thy seed the whole world shall be blessed. Now, tell me, now who does this class represents? We already studied about two classes. Heavenly salvation is finished. Now, tell me, what does or who does this Hidikel river represents? Which class of people does it represent? Joel Bidar, which class of people does it represent? Ancient worthies. Very good. It represents ancient worthies because Abraham himself came from that uh, land. So these are the ancient worthies who come to the earthly salvation, but they will be first part of the earthly salvation. Now, who are they? Matthew 11, 11 it says, you see, from Abel to John the Baptist. There's none greater than those who are born of him and then John the Baptist. So, yet, uh, notwithstanding, the least member of the kingdom of heaven is still greater than John the Baptist. So, this represents the ancient worthies who will be resurrected in a better resurrection. Why? Why they will be resurrected in a better resurrection? If you see, they already proved their faithfulness to God and to, you see, death. God has given them a certificate that they have obtained a good name. But the only thing is that, they are never given the reward. So when will they get the reward? It's only of the completion of the church. Therefore, if you see, first is the church, like for the next great multitude. As soon as the great multitude is completed, immediately in the world, the first person who is going to be raised and resurrected back to life is the ancient worthies. So let us read Hebrews 11.35 and Hebrews 11.39 and 40. Uh, Munna sister, can you read Woman received their woman received their dead rise to life again, and other way torture, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. 
not accepting deliverance they might obtain better resurrection not the first resurrection see difference between the first resurrection the better resurrection first resurrection is for the church but this is a better resurrection means what this is not the best but the better compared to the world this is a better resurrection that means huh, they have died at a very old age but when they are going to be resurrected they are going to be resurrected uh, as if uh, at the age of 30 years. Uh, as they lived when they were 30 years old, it is in the same age, it is in the same nature that these uh, ancient Buddhists have been resurrected. Uh, they will be having a perfect human body in the same human flesh and through them, God will administer this world. Read Hebrews 11, chapter 39 and 40. 11 chapter 39 and 40. Uh, Anil Buddha, can you read? Women received their dead rise to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. 39 and 40, Buddha. You read 35th verse, the above one. Oh. 39 and 40? Hmm. And this all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God have, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. See, God has provided something better for us. So, they have one better, but we have promised much better than that one. That is the best prize. The perfect prize, you see. And that is the heavenly salvation we have provided for, for them, the perfect human nature, earthly. So they should not be made perfect without the church. Once the church is completed, then only they will be blessed. So what is the work they are going to do in Christ's kingdom? You see, in Christ's kingdom, they are going to be visible rulers in all the earth. Read Psalms 45.16. Amar Burdar, you are there. Can you read Psalms 45.16? Is it possible? Psalms 45, 16. 16. Okay, 16. 16. Instead of hmm. they, hmm. fathers shall be their children, hmm. whom thou mayst make princes in all the earth. Very good. Brother. Instead of thy fathers. You see? It's telling of Jesus. Instead of Jesus' father, they shall be Jesus' children, whom Jesus will make princes in all the earth. It seems. What is the meaning of this one? See, David was a father for Jesus. When? When he came at the first advent, Jesus was David's son. But at the second advent, what will happen? Jesus, Jesus will be everlasting father and David will be son of Jesus because Jesus is going to give life and resurrect him back to the earth. You see, back from the grave. So, instead of your fathers, they shall become your children. And what is the role you are going to give in the kingdom? You will make them princes in all the earth. So, the whole world, in the whole world, they shall be doing the administration activities. Like today we have ministers, now, prime ministers, president. You see, so these are going to be the ministers in food department, forest department, aviation department, transport department, finance department. All the departments, these are the ancient Vodhis who is going to rule the world. Imagine, huh? these, these ancient Vodhis have come. How beautiful this earth will be there. Isn't it? If Joseph comes and uh, takes the entire uh, responsibility of the food department, imagine everybody will have uh, free food. Uh, if Noah takes uh, in charge of the uh, forest department, uh, there won't be any theft at all. Uh. All the animals will live peacefully. You see, because he carried the animals in the uh, uh, in his ark for one year. So he knows how to maintain these animals and all. Then similarly, dear brethren, this is going to happen in Christ's kingdom. So <clears throat> the last river, you see, the fourth river, what, what is the name of the fourth river? Sunita Esther, what is the name of the fourth river? Euphrates. Very good, sir. So Anything else is mentioned where it went? No. So this is the last river. 
and you tell me who is left over we already seen three so who is the left over world of mankind very good the world of mankind so this euphrates river represents the world of mankind that's what we read in the bible wherever in the bible euphrates river comes with her we should immediately think that that represents the world of mankind these are the second group of people who are going to come for the earthly salvation okay now who will come uh, huh? who will come in the resurrection who will come back in the resurrection if nobody is going to ask uh, uh, or answer then it will be very difficult tell me who is going to come in the resurrection in the world nobody ah uh. huh? when jesus is going to return second coming who is going to be raised from the dead everyone everyone are you the why are fearing to tell huh? why are you afraid tell boldly no everyone will come that's what the bible says for as adam all die so in christ all shall be made alive so in thousand years everybody will resurrected in a sinful condition they will be brought slowly to the human perfection you see that is the reason thousand years given for christ so in the thousand years what will happen age how will the age go how will the age move it will be move forward or reverse reverse reverse, reverse. Huh? how how are you, you are telling that it will go reverse do you have any proof for it tell me you have any proof for it huh yes it is written in job 3325 ah job 3325 very good register read his place shall be fresher than a child he shall return to the days of his youth ah you see his flesh shall be fresher than a child he shall return to the days of his youth he shall return back turn back reverse his age will run reverse the other end so jesus what will he do in thousand years whom whom shall he bind whom will he bind satan satan very good very good for how many years one year two year how many year how many years very good why why correct why you open eyes hmm. of wisdom hmm. whose eyes was <laughs> world everyone everyone uh, world uh, very good uh, correct no everybody is yes and eyes has to be open no if satan is there where will he allow to be open huh there all though they have ears they are deaf though they have eyes they can't see You can't behold that gospel. So in thousand years, everybody's eyes has to be open. Means, Satan has to be bound. Okay. Now, what about the animals? What will the animals eat in a thousand years? Chicken, mutton. What will the animals eat in thousand years? Grass. Grass. Birds also maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Butter. <laughs> Okay, a cow will eat grass. What about lion, lion, leopard, cheetah, tiger? What will it? What it will eat? They also eat grass. Ah, then they will complete to forest department. <laughs> read Isaiah eleven chapter six to nine. Isaiah eleven chapter six to nine. Munaster, read Isaiah eleven chapter six to nine. the wolf also shall dwell in the lamb and the leopard leaf, uh, shall lie down with the kid and the calf and uh, the young lion and the fatling together 
and a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like dogs, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass, and the wind child shall put his hand on the cock price then they shall not hurt nor destroy in all may all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the lord as the waters cover the sea mm, the lion shall eat the straw like the ox you see it shall eat the straw very good okay and uh, what did jesus taught us to pray a father in heaven hallowed be the name May thy kingdom. Hmm. May thy kingdom. Come. Come. Let thy will be done. In Lord. Ah, as it is in heaven. 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 I should teach like Sunday class, huh? Huh? Very good. So this is the four salvations. Got it? So the four rivers that came out of Eden represents the four salvations. See, heavenly salvation, earthly salvation. In these two, two, two portions are there. Like in 44,000, great multitude, ancient worries and the world. You know, this is beautifully proven today. How you know? This river, among the four rivers, only two rivers are there today. Euphrates and Hidikil or Tigris. The today's name is called as Tigris. You know where it is? It is in Iraq. But the first two rivers, Pishon and Gihon is not there. So what does it represent, sir? That means you see, Pishon and Gihon is the heavenly salvation. That is invisible part. It can't be seen. While Euphrates and Tigris can be seen. That means it's a visible part. That's the earthly salvation, which is a visible portion. Okay? Now, this is what is represented in the four rivers out of Eden. Okay. Now, anybody has got any questions, any doubts, they can ask. Anyone, any questions, any doubts? Anil Budar, Sunita Astar. No, brother. Okay. Uh, Joel Budar? No, brother. Okay. Munna Sister? No, brother. Okay. Romy, sister, and Amar, brother. No, brother. But I, I thought like uh, Pison and Gihon River is, <laughs> is still there. Yes. I also thought so. But uh, today it's not visibly seen yeah. in uh, any place of uh, Iraq, brother. It's not there at all. It's uh, invisible. That means God has hidden it. That's a lesson for us to prove or to show that the heavenly salvation can't be seen from our uh, human eyes. Okay. Thank you, brother. Okay. Okay, then. Thank you. Uh, 